folks. Gonna show you guys a new unit here from Dab Press. It's the HR10T35V. It is a 10 ton drip tech rosin press. Uh, it pairs up with a Strongway 10 ton pump with gauge. Model number 46278. This is $80. This is $4.99 right now. Uh, the features of this unit is you've got a frame made of 6061 uh, aircraft grade aluminum. You've got stainless steel rods. You've got high quality linear bearings. You've got a 10 ton cylinder. You've got basically the bottom plate, the rest of the frame. You've got uh, rubber feet here for tilting it forward, doing drip tech. You've got some integrated magnets, <coughs> one behind the nameplate, one right below it. So you can take anything that's metal and stick to that. This is another magnet I use. That sucker's on there good. I gotta use a tool to get it off, a little dab tool or something. Anyway, so. You got the pump here, 10 tons with the gauge, uh, reads quite a lot of PSI, reads 14,500 PSI, however, <clears throat> the, the pump's got an internal safety feature where I believe it uh, tops out at about 9,000 PSI, so that's quite high when used with the cylinder here. So the press itself, it weighs 27 pounds roughly. Uh, the pump weighs about 14, I think. Um, the coupler on the back of this press, this coupler here is it's a little bit unknown exactly what it is. Um, <clears throat> seems to be a quick release coupler of the one quarter inch NPT type. However, Strongway calls it a ZG quarter inch coupler. Um, I know it's the exact same fitting that Dake uses with their shop press. And Dake said theirs was a quarter inch NPT. So, for the sake of reference, that's what this coupler is, and the fitting comes with uh, the end of the pump. However, we do send a pair of couplers, the one that's attached to the cylinder, and then another that you can, uh, that'll pair up with that, that you can attach to your hose. So if you're building your own pump, you can somehow, with the hydraulic pieces, adapters and whatnot, you can eventually get your pump to pair up with this press with what we send. Uh, you will need to make sure whatever pump you do decide to use, if it's not the recommended pump, because this is just such a great value at $80 if you do decide to go with a different brand pump, um, <clears throat> you just need to make sure that it's rated for 10 tons. And if you're building your whole pump with the hose assembly, you gotta make sure that everything is rated for 10 tons. The gauge, the fittings, the hose, the pump itself has to be super, super critical. Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna function and there could be damage and you don't wanna get hurt. So, so here's a look at the plates here. We've got just a down shot, 15 millimeters of uh, bamboo nice hardwood uh, you that's basically your insulation for your plates it'll keep the plates a steady temperature and the machine won't or the unit won't uh, drain heat from the plates here you've got the locking screws for locking the heaters and in, into the plates uh, here on the side you can see these top this is the thermocouple you've got one in each of the plates and that's because we've got two PIDs, if you can see that. 
and you can independently control the heat of each of the plates which um, it's nice I don't think it's really necessary it's uh, I suppose one would be just as good but this is the most accurate way and it's 500 watts of power that go to the plates to heat them up so this press will probably preheat in about five to ten minutes depending on how cold your space is um, really quick uh, once it's running it doesn't use 500 watts it just kind of trickles the power so it might use 50 watts every time it pulses to the machine so it's uh, it's pretty energy efficient the cylinder you can kind of see how it's set up in there it's just basically pressed up against the plate uh, the bottom plate here and that these brackets here are basically bolted into the frame and you can adjust where they're at so that you can easily remove the cylinder so that can be replaced if you ever needed to or wanted to uh, the frame got to put the same amount of stress on this as I did on building your own hydraulic pump uh, the frame while I'm confident it's rated more than 10 tons I would never replace the cylinder with anything over a 10 ton cylinder in fact uh, if down the road if you ever have trouble with the cylinder which you shouldn't all you need to do is contact dab press and they will get you another one whether it's in warranty or out of warranty you might have to pay for a, I'm sure you'd have to pay for a replacement out of warranty but it's easily replaced by the end user so that's a really nice point trying to remember everything I've said here so <clears throat> It's not super heavy, it's not super small either, but it is portable. You're looking at about nine and a half inches wide by 16 inches tall by about seven and a half inches deep. Of course, for traveling, I would probably recommend to remove the heating rods and the thermocouple. The thermocouple is only going to be finger tight in there and the heating rods, you got some Allen wrenches to um, loosen those up. That way you can detach it and you can put it in your travel case separately. Um, or you can figure out a way to make it all work, but I think it's a pretty quick setup just to get those things put back in from going from point A to point B. Um, So the unit, as far as how the drip tech works, basically you just load your uh, parchment paper or no parchment paper. I've tried it without and uh, it does work, works fine. Uh, the downside is you make a real mess of your plates. You potentially have a loss of yields unless you have a way to really squeegee that rosin off. and. Um, also, uh, the front of the plates, you got to really make sure those are wiped clean before you tilt the press back up. Otherwise, the rosin's just going to drip. It's going to get on the wood. It's going to make a mess. So um, there are some people that have an interest in that. So sure, you can do it. Um, we recommend to use parchment paper because it's easy collection and cleanup. So, but basically what you would do is you would uh, put, your, put your parchment paper in, put your load in, whether it's a rectangle or a or a round puck, cylinder puck, put that in, you get a little pressure on the product and once you get the pressure there to where it's going to hold itself in place you tilt the unit forward and it's important to have you know parchment or you know a big wide mouth container I would definitely not suggest a small container especially if you've got a, a fairly big puck in there it's going you're going to need a trough perhaps to catch your catch your uh, rosin um, definitely something to collect it below 
and then you just press it like you normally would and um, it's a little telling when you do the drip tech because uh, you'll actually see the drips come to a cr you know slow to a crawl and at that point you're relatively confident that the rosin's done versus you know an upright press um, you know most of us know about how long we need to press for but for a beginner um, you know it could be a question of you know do I need to press it longer so this is uh, a little bit telling in that regard just useful stuff so the whole point of the drip tech is basically to uh, try to preserve terpenes I guess also um, allow uh, uh, easy collection I mean no doubt it is much easier to collect uh, the rosin from a big pile down below with minimal collection off the parchment versus you know a big folded piece of parchment with uh, rosin trapped and all the nooks and crannies there so that's a benefit um, and the terpene preservation you know that's probably the biggest one just getting the rosin away from the heat as quickly as possible it just makes sense you know it's not uh, it's not potentially evaporating uh, volatile terpenes during your press time so um, benefit there and of course um, we've got a new mold coming out we don't have it available yet this is the um, 30 millimeter two-piece stainless steel mold uh, I do like to use this one for between five and seven grams seven grams can be a little tricky to get in between the plates um, the plates have an inch and a quarter opening so you have to be really mindful about how tall of a puck you're building in here you can't just go all out um, how dense your material plays a role in that the more fluffier buds tend to spring back um, so you really got to be quick to load them so just a couple of points there so I do like the uh, 30 millimeter mold and, and it works great um, most of the time I'm typically pressing five five grams at a time I'm usually wanting to get about a gram of rosin every squish and why I squish that little it's because that's what I use and I don't really press for anybody else so um, that's what I do and plus it also gives me a lot of uh, time to experiment so you know about every three or four days I can do another press and uh, maybe mix things up try something different and uh, doing those more personal sized runs is good for that you get a lot of practice so let me go ahead and turn the press on here see how hot it will get before I'm done talking to you guys so the unit is real easy to maintain and keep clean I like to use kitchen disinfecting wipes uh, just wipe it down it's gonna get dusty sitting out I mean at least where I live it's dusty uh, you know it's important to keep everything well maintained and you don't want bits of flour maybe left over from from a run stuck on your press and then dropping down on your parchment and getting in your rosin and the plates I usually do a cleaning like this on my plates at least every other press I don't know I've just gotten in the habit of doing it so You never know. Sometimes you pull up, you pull a press out, and you might have had just a little bit of rosin eking out the corner of the paper right here, and it drips down. And it's not necessarily good to have it um, getting on your threading, and plus it'll make it stinky when you reheat your press. So it was really, it's really cold in here. It's probably 55 degrees. Um, we get the press is already at about 90 
and climbing, so it gets up there quick. Let me see if I can show you the bottom. So you can see that bar down on the bottom that almost touches. That's, uh, that's basically a thick bar. It's about the same thickness as this here. And it's just vertical, and that creates a really, really solid foundation for this press. So basically it's got, I don't know what that would be, two and a half inch thick where the, uh, where the cylinder sits for support. So very, very heavy duty frame. And being made out of aluminum it helps cut down on the weight. So it's only been a few minutes. We're up to 140. So it will just be shortly and it will be at 200. Along with the uh, cylinder mold, the 2x4 filters are nice. These work perfect with this. Um, they're, they're a little long for this, so if you're good with your, uh, if you're good with your packing, you can get the pucks nice and short. If you can cut this filter, you might be able to get another use out of it, or at least you might be able to squish out an eighth with whatever you have left over from a cut. So these are really good. These are 90 microns. Really like these filters. Can't wait to get into those. And the dab tool kits also a handy little piece here. It's really nice looking. It's made of uh, bamboo. You got a silicone mat. I haven't really found much of a use for that. Uh, I thought about if I could just sit it under the press for drip tech, but I don't think you can. It's just not big enough, so or it's too big. Comes with a bunch of these silicone containers. This will hold a lot, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, comes with uh, a few tools, dab tools. There's a longer one. I, I think I've got that over at my vape station, but it's like one of these. So you get two of those, you get a longer one, and then you get the scraper. I like this tool. It's pretty nice. Not a real fan of its flat edge here. I wish it was beveled so it, you can scrape a little better with it, but this one does pretty good for big globs. So, I like having that. Never really kept a carrying case for stuff. That was my first one, and ever since I got it, I actually use it. Um, and I'll use the silicone containers for uh, short-term storage. You know, I'm not too worried about it. I know a lot of people are um, concerned with silicone, period. You know, it's kind of goes in hand with rosin. I suppose a lot of folks have gotten into rosin to uh, try to get solvents out of their medicine. So, you know, I get it. And vaporizing, you know, a lot of us are into better health and we try to avoid things that could compromise our health. So there's, there's an understanding there. So that's basically the press and you can see it's preheated. It's probably been preheated for for a minute, I don't know if we can pull that back in the video, but you can, you'll be able to see. I mean, it was heated up pretty quick. She's ready to go. So yeah, you can uh, with this press, you can really get in and out really quick. Um, if timing's an issue for you, uh, you can um, get it preheated, get your press up, finished in probably a matter of 15, 20 minutes. So, no big deal. You can go quick with it. So that's the press, guys. Um, I don't really know if I could add any more to it. Um, it's got a one-year warranty. The rosin box that does the 
temperature controls, controls the heaters and thermocouples. That's got a one-year warranty. If this craps out on you after a year, um, we'll only charge you 50% for a replacement, so you don't have to buy a brand new one. That's pretty nice. Um, of course, we don't expect anybody to have any issues with this, but I would say the only thing that could potentially have a problem with this would be uh, the cylinder, because that seems to be the part that has the most volatility of anything else on here, and this would be easy replacement, so um, whether it's in warranty or out of warranty, this is an easy fix. Otherwise, everything else we expect to hold up for years. You know, these plates are made of uh, 6061 aluminum that's been anodized, so it's actually harder than aluminum. And uh, if you know about the thermal conductivity of aluminum, it's actually really good. Uh, and it does well for this application. So choosing aluminum with the anodized on the outside is a, it's a pretty good choice for uh, good heat on the plates. Alright guys, I'm going to close it down now. Thanks for watching.